It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. Hey guys, Tyler here. Squid Game, seemingly like the most popular show on Netflix at the moment. Unfortunately, I have not seen it myself, so I cannot tell you guys if it was like good or bad or in the middle, so I've seen similar concepts before, like the most dangerous games, like Battle Royale, like Hunger Games, and so this sort of concept about people versus people is not anything new to me, so I'm kind of curious how this whole entire show just plays out, but it seems as though there has been like a controversy with this whole entire show by concerned parents who are basically stating this show entire program is causing violence everywhere. And so without further hesitation, let's look at the controversy and just like react to it. Squid Game might foster a generation of violent bullies, expert. The series broke Netflix records this past month, exceeding 111 million viewers, the platform largest audience yet. Squid Game sees his characters competing in a deadly tournament of children's game for a light alternating cash prize awarded to the last player standing. At nearly every turn, the show depicts acts of physical and emotional violence being harped onto his characters, ultimately resulting in their death until one winner is crowned. The first thing I want to state is the obvious. This program was not meant for kids in mind. Most countries, I think, have an 18 plus rating for this show. And so that means that kids are not meant to see the cell entire program. It was meant for adults only. That means that the parents who are allowing their kids to watch that kind of content, knowing that their mental whole entire framework for the kid is not ready for that kind of program, are being very neglectful when it comes to this sort of content right there. But not just that though. But there's also a whole entire option on Netflix for kids. That means that of course, they will block the whole entire violent content for, you know, kids in favor of kiddie programs. It's called like the parental guidance mode, if I'm not mistaken. And so Netflix actually has a whole entire thing for people to use. But for some strange reason, they never took the time and the effort to actually put on parental guidelines for that whole entire program for Netflix. But anyway, let's continue on. Squid Game. Children copying Netflix show in playground school warns. Quebec schools worry kids are copying Squid Game. English Council urges parents not to allow children to watch Squid Game. Another thing that comes to my mind when I see these sort of headlines about, oh my god, our kids are playing the exact sort of game like in the whole entire show, is that a lot of these parents don't necessarily pay much attention to what kids play. When I was a kid, games like, you know, red light, green light were quite common. Sure, the whole entire show makes it even bloodier because that's the whole entire point of the show, but by and large, those games existed way before the show, like way before the show. Now, obviously, Again, the parents should, you know, take in mind what kind of content their kids are watching. At the same time, let us not pretend that these sort of games that were presented in the show are anything new in the slightest. Please not, let's not pretend about all that. Besides the whole entire concerned parents angle, it seems as though the opposite angle is also being portrayed as far as the media is concerned. Squid Game proves that shells don't need to feature an all-white cast to be successful. The South Korean drama series, which cost Netflix a mere $21 million to produce, is now worth nearly $900 million in impact value. I love how this tweet just states that basically prior to shows like, you know, the Squid Game, there was like no successful programs or movies prior to the solitary program. Let's go back to the 1950s back where Akira Kurosawa was like really popular. He was like making movies like Seven Samurai and Rushima, and they also had like international praise among critics in the audience. There was also Godzilla that came out during that sort of time period and was also really successful around the world. Then we have, of course, the whole entire 1970s, 1980 martial arts boom 
where people like Jackie Chan and Bruce Lee, all these sort of famous people in that sort of subgenre. And then we have, of course, the Bill Cosby show, and like a lot of the shows like The Fresh Prince of Bel Air, which came out back in like the 1990s. So, yes. Prior to this whole entire program, there were actually shows and movies that had like minority characters that were really successful worldwide. To sit here and say that there was no such thing as a successful show prior to this whole entire program, it's just backwards to me. I love how a lot of these people say, well you see, Black Panther's like the first ever black hero, or oh my god, this guy's like the first Asian whatever. Like I swear to god, like a lot of these people, I think, are living in the past and not consider the stuff that happened back then. But anyway, what do you guys think about this whole entire controversy? Tell me in the comment section down below. And as always, I'll see you guys in the next video. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. He's your only black friend, so he's your best black friend. I wouldn't trade him for another black friend. Because black friends are rare, as you should be aware. He smiles like Richard Pryor, so just sit and stare. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler. It's everyone's friend, it's Tyler.